Well, good morning, everyone. Please come gather around as you are able. Good morning. On behalf of Herta and Evie and Ruth, Matt, Jillian, Meredith, and George, I want to welcome you here this morning. My name is James Fast, and Pam and I are honored to be here with you today as we remember and celebrate Leona Oni Lowen. The family would also like to extend a special welcome to those of you watching on the live stream, to Carolot Daycare, the Elmwood Church, and other friends and family. Thank you for joining us today. Let's pray together. Our Father, we are gathered here in this place, in this cemetery for a sad but happy, joyous occasion. Our hearts have an empty hole in them, but our friend, our sister, our daughter is home with you and for that we are grateful, thankful and gives us hope. We thank you for this beautiful day that we can gather here together and we ask that you would continue to encourage us, bless us and comfort us in the days and weeks to come as we remember Oni. In Jesus name, Amen. The service this morning will will move along unannounced and to begin I'd like to call up Jeff to give the eulogy. My name is Jeff Lowen. I'm the cousin to uh, Leona. Um, and I uh, remember uh, Leona's joy, laughter and smile. I can just still see that uh, all the time and I'm really honored to be able to give to you and bring to you a small piece of her life. Leona Jean Lowen, April 28th, 1961 to June 21st, 2022. Leona, affectionately known as Oni, passed away peacefully in St. Boniface Hospital on June 21st with a sister and a brother at her bedside. Leona, second daughter of George and Herta Lowen, was born and raised with her two sisters, Evelyn and Ruth, and brother George Jr. in Abbotsford, BC. Happy childhood memories included Friday night family outings to Harrison Hot Springs, visiting grandparents on the Chilliwack farm or in Vancouver, camping at Jasper National Park in August after the raspberry picking season was done, and singing, singing in Lake Eric Church. Leona was baptized and joined the MB Church in September of 1974. One particular family road trip stands out 
as life-altering among Oni's family vacations. The sisters were in the intermediate grades at Centennial Park Elementary the first time we drove down the I-5 to California. No air conditioning, Denny's by day, and Motel 6 by night. <laughs> Disneyland, here we come. Leona's future unfolded in Tomorrowland where she got behind the wheel of a snazzy car in the Autopia attraction with dad as her hesitant passenger. As they left the vehicle after the jolting ride, dad made a joke about Oni's driving abilities which she accepted as a lifelong challenge to be, someday, a woman at the wheel who excelled in operating a vehicle. Fast forward two decades and our family was once again heading toward the happiest place on earth in Anaheim, California. Approaching LA, Dad offered Leona the distinct honor of driving the next challenging leg of the journey and so with gratitude and gusto she steered us through the freeways of LA to our hotel. For Oni, the reversing of Dad's joking remark was the reward not the accomplishment of navigating LA traffic. <clears throat> After high school, Leona moved to Winnipeg to pursue higher education, graduating from CMU MBBC and University of Manitoba, and then launch, launching a career in early, head, early childhood education. Emerging from a Bachelor of Human Ecology degree with a major in Family Studies, Leona landed a job in room one, two-year-olds, at Carolot Day Care Center. During her nearly 35 years there, Oni held responsibilities as a room supervisor, assistant director, and most recently as a director while the turbulent COVID-19 pandemic persisted. As bystanders, uh, our family regards Oni's vocational efforts as valiant and impressive. With the help of her parents, Leona established herself in Winnipeg by purchasing her Dunrobin bungalow, just a few minutes brisk walk from her job, especially brisk in winter. Lori Duick, a, a neighbor from down the hall in Harmony House and Elmwood Care Group friend, shared the house with Oni until a few years ago when she moved into her own condo. Another beloved housemate was a black and white dog whose name was inspired by the U.S. Army General Norman Schwarzkopf. Leona capably managed her home and yard, planting flowers, clearing snow, assembling barbecues, canning the pink apple sauce from her crab apple tree, averting basement floods, maintaining app appliances and fixtures. Leona did it all. Of course, she had support from nearby kind people like Evan, Nancy and sweet Talia, James and Pam. And twice a year Oni's neighbors would see George and Herta pitching in when they arrived on their rakes and ladders tours. <coughs> Thank you dear neighbors. We remember Oni as a woman who authentically lived the basics. Love God, love your neighbors. Leona knew that the context of her work in childhood education was play. Oni was simultaneously hard-working and fun-loving. Numerous creative hobbies, games, and interests occupied her off-hour works, off-work hours. For example, she was talented with needles. During her first year in college, a dormitory neighbor hired Leona to redesign a pattern and sew her bridal gown. Oni was up for the challenge, bought a bunch of sheets from MCC, stitched together a practice dress, perfected the details, and expertly tailored Becky's gown, all at the age of 18. <clears throat> Knitting needles kept her busy too. Oni was a charter member of the MBBC SKF, or Serene Knitters Fellowship. <laughs> Our grandma, Elizabeth Lowen, was the inspiration behind Leona's foray into needlepoint and cross-stitch. The Toronto Blue Jays' success in the, early, <clears throat> in the early 90s led Oni to a love of baseball which culminated in a road trip on which she visited 10 historic ballparks including Wrigley Field, Fenway Park and the old Yankee Stadium. In contrast to, a relaxing, to relaxing with a ball game on TV and solitaire on her tablet, 
Oh, and he was a swift opponent in Dutch Blitz and quick thinking strategist in the Domino's based chicken foot. <clears throat> she developed a love for photography, working in dark rooms and yearbook committees in high school and college. Skills behind the Canon camera lens proved handy in her many travels throughout Canada and the US, Europe and South America. Our candid pho pho photographic memories do not capture Oni in action because she was the busy one taking the pictures. While close contact remained with her immediate family in BC, Leona's Prairie Families of the Heart included the Care a Lot Day Care Center, Elmwood Church Friends, and the Dunrobin Avenue neighborhood. In these spheres of relationships, Oni was beloved and blessed. She was appreciated as a reliable, hard worker, generous and compassionate to friends and strangers alike, a kind, courageous woman. <clears throat> Leona especially enjoyed being an aunt to Jillian and Meredith, never ignoring an opportunity to spoil her nieces. Advent, Christmas and summer vacations with them on Gabriel Island, BC are precious family traditions and we will sorely miss Leona's presence there. Leona's life with us was resolu resolutely heaven-bent. She generously gave of her time and talents for the benefit of others and to the glory of God. Oni's retirement plans for returning to BC did not unfold as we expected, but we believe that she heard Jesus calling softly and tenderly, O oh, sister, come home. She is rejoicing today, reunited with our dad in heaven. Leona's departure is mourned by her mother, Herta Lowen, and immediate family members, Evelyn Lowen, Ruth and Matt Sherwood, Jillian and Meredith, and George Lowen Jr. The family wishes to convey our heartfelt thanks to the individuals at St. Boniface Hospital 5B who compassionately attended to her medical needs and personal care. First of all, uh, acknowledgement to Evelyn for writing that beautiful eulogy. Uh, standing with me are all of the people, not quite all, but these are the people that Oni considered siblings and then the nieces and nephews as well. So we have James and Pam, Lori from, from Winnipeg, Jill and Meredith here, their parents Ruth and Matt, and then we have Evelyn, Sharon, and Kelvin as well. All here as those that Oni called brothers and sisters and nieces. I would like to, to begin by thanking James for agreeing to be here and lead this ceremony today. Although they probably met a decade or so earlier, I feel I have something to do with the uh, lifelong friendship that developed. When James came to college in, uh, what was it, 91? Yep. Ni in 91, uh, I invited him to my sister's place, as I did with many of my college friends, uh, for dinner. He was duly impressed by her cooking and hospitality, and especially the big plates, yes. <laughs> <laughs> which she had, which made, made college students you know, much more comfortable. Um, he said that this allowed one to pin your ears back and dig in. Yes. <laughs> when, we, when we kind of looked quizzical at him, he said, well, you pin your ears back so that they don't get caught on the way back out. <laughs> Sometime later, I was calling the church, or I was calling the uh, school dorm to look for James, and the person that asked on the other end said, uh, oh, uh, he's not here. I, I think he's at his sister's place. Uh, to which I responded, 
oh, you mean my sisters. <laughs> and, and so at that point, I knew that a, that a lifelong bond had been forged. Thank you, James and Pam, for being here, for being here with us. Oni and I were very different, very different people. Growing up, it was kind of like cats and dogs sometimes. We began to grow closer in my college years when we would take long road trips commuting back and forth from Winnipeg to BC together. She introduced me to a love of Canadian folk music especially especially Bruce Coburn and Valdi. <clears throat> it must have been it must have been that music which would eventually beckon us to the Gulf Islands. My advice for her on dealing with two-year-olds was never helpful. <laughs> <laughs> However, as her career moved into management, my business experience uh, did allow me to be of a little more assistance. I tried never to give her direct advice. We all know how that would have gone, <laughs> especially unsolicited. Uh, but I would try and help her ask the right questions, which led her invariably to wise and fair and just decisions when it came to her management style. During this time, we, uh, we spoke a lot more often on the phone. We, uh, uh, and we started to talk about all sorts of things, many of which most people would think were rather boring, like public health policy during the COVID uh, crisis. But those conversations eventually always morphed into menu planning for our next Gabriola trip. <laughs> when Dad took ill last spring, Those phone calls became a communications lifeline for us. And we grieved together. We had many plans for her retirement, but God chose rest instead. Rest well, my sister. I am Leona's sister, Ruth. My brother George and I had the privilege of being with Leona, Oni, while she was in the hospital in Winnipeg. Oni was an amazing sister. But as I spent time in Winnipeg, I realized that the Oni I knew was the same Oni that everyone else knew. When it took me an hour to walk a three minute walk to her daycare center, care a lot, because neighbors and daycare families and staff are stopping to tell me what Oni meant to them, I could see that they were impacted by her love just as I had been. Lori, her roommate for about 30 years, loved Oni and showed her that love in practical caring ways throughout those years. Our family was so thankful that Oni was taken by ambulance to the very same hospital where Lori worked. Lori was able to tend to Oni's needs and be present with her even before family arrived, keeping us in the loop with her texts. She continued to be an incredible support to Oni and to us while we were in Winnipeg. We are so thankful Lori could be here today. I want to tell one story from the hospital about Oni's response to the cards and pictures that the daycare children had made for her. They were posted on the wall of her room. 
I was very excited about them and started telling her about the pictures and the messages that were written. At this time, Oni's response was very limited, so I wasn't expecting too much. When I read each name of the children on the cards, Oni perked up and started to smile. So I perked up and asked her, do you know so-and-so? She corrected my mispronunciation and nodded yes with a smile. Each child at Carolot brought joy to Oni. Thank you to each one of you. You made a difference in her life. For every word I use to describe Oni, there are hundreds of little stories that back them up from every circle in her life. Just moments before she passed away, George and I had the privilege of blessing her on behalf of her family, friends, neighbors, Carolot, Elmwood Church and her small group and whomever she met. I told her that all of these people have told me these words and we are blessing you with those words. You are kind and loving, hospitable, humble, honest and trustworthy. You are compassionate and over the top generous. You love children. Paying a bill for someone else is a privilege. You are strong, determined, and committed to finishing a task God has given you. You are gracious and show mercy to those around you. You are a helper to the discouraged and weary even when you yourself need help. Self-sacrificing. These are only some of the words I have heard from others and experienced myself. Oni didn't always want to hear that, even in the hospital. She did not think that she was doing anything amazing. When I told her some of those words days before, she would always nod no. But God created her this way and she humbly embraced who she was without any recognition. This time I told her that I wanted her to receive that blessing. And I felt that she heard me. She didn't nod no and received that blessing from all of us. Everyone knows the same Oni. Although we, re we all received her love in unique personal ways. What compelled Oni to live this way was her surrender to Jesus who loves her unconditionally. She herself was loved deeply all the time and that gave her the power to love others the way she did. She believed that Jesus was leading her every step of her journey on a pathway of life. She trusted in him. She told me that in her last days. She told me in the hospital that she had left everything in God's hands and was at complete peace with that. God unfolded his plan for her after the blessing we gave her, I told her that when she sees Jesus' hand reaching out to her, she should take his hand and walk with him to her new home. I saw her mouth open wide, and with every bit of energy left in her, her lips moved up and down as if she was calling out in excitement, without anguish or pain. Those were her last words to us. I love that those unspoken words are left for us to wonder about. Oni took Jesus' hand and walked with him to her home. That is exactly what happened in that moment. To everyone who knew Oni, the board, the staff and families at Carolot, Elmwood Church and her small group, her neighbors on Dunraven Avenue, and many friends, cousins, and relatives. Our family says thank you for the love and kindness you have shown to her over many years. We are grateful for the impact you have made on her life, which we as a family have heard countless times. Thank you. <coughs> so, I'm Meredith, and this is Jill, and we were Oni's nieces. Uh, Jill and I were very blessed to have Oni as an aunt. She, along with our Aunt Evie here, 
Um, she loved to give us little gifts for each day of Advent in December, and that's a memory that we'll always take with us. And as we got older, our mom would always tell us, this is probably the last year you'll be getting them, because you're getting too old for them. <laughs> and then still, even this past December, we would get our first Advent gift on December 1st. <laughs> And this is a family tradition that I know Jill and I will remember for the rest of our lives. And Advent is only one example of the many ways that Oni, Oni's generosity and love impacted our lives. Some memories that I hold close to my heart are when I got to have time with her at our last family vacation at Gabriola. I got to have a conversation with her and I got to tell her that I loved her and I'll always remember that. And another memory that I'll hold close to my heart is getting to see her in the hospital when I went out to Winnipeg a few weeks ago. Um, when I was in the hospital with her, I would sometimes read psalms to her while she rested. And one that stood out to me while I was reading to her was Psalm 46 that said, Be still and know that I am God. Oni was comforted by these words. And Jill and I will miss our loving, strong-willed, and generous Aunt Oni. Uh, hello, beloveds. I am Sharon, and uh, a lot like Oni's beloved Lori, who shared a life with her for 30 years in a home, Evelyn and I, um, Oni's sister have shared apartments and flats for three decades too, so God provides friends for those of us who are single in a single life. And James, not to upstage you or anything, my dear new brother, <laughs> um, but I understand through um, Mom Herta that we have folk from Deutschland who are joining us. I have gathered 10 of them in, in uh, Germany today. I've been given the privilege of reading from the Prairie family, uh, Communities of the Heart that, that Oni had. So just a few thoughts that came in by email. First of all, from the Carolot family at the daycare center. This is from uh, the board of directors, past and present members. They said, not only was Leona the face of Carolot, but she was a compassionate childcare worker, boss, friend, and mentor. Many members of the board of directors are also parents of children in her care. By day we saw the love Leona had for the children, and by night the care that she had for the wellness of the center. We will miss your fi smiling face, Oni, and we will surely miss your homemade cookies. And from Elliot Ehrman, who was a co-worker of Leona's for 30 or 27 years, 27 years at Carolot. For 33 years, Leona truly embodied the name Carolot. Oni cared a lot about all things associated with the child care center. She did anything and everything possible to ensure each child in our care was happy and safe. She devoted the same measure of care for the families of the children. And as deeply as Oni cared about the children, she also cared for her co-workers and staff, making every effort possible to ensure colleagues were happy and content and that they had all they needed. To know that they were cared about, welcomed and respected. Leona epitomized professionalism in every sense of the word. There are simply not enough positive adjectives to describe how perfectly Leona fit the Carolot name. She was an exemplary human being, co-worker and director, forever remembered and forever missed. And from the Elmwood uh, Church, MB Church, the associate pastor of worship there, Marnie Enns, she writes, Oni had a heart for worship. As a co-leader of one of the worship teams, Leona loved to plan a worship service <clears throat> and put a lot of time, thought, and prayer into the details. 
carefully considering the sermon topic, Oni had clear ideas about how the songs and scripture work together. She loved it when Brian Dirksen's songs fit perfectly. <laughs> she would research each song, and if she found an extra verse, she would include it. She was always open to suggestions from everyone on how to make the music better. She was welcoming of new members on her team, and she enjoyed including extra instrumentation whenever possible, especially Andrew on the saxophone. Oni was a joy to work with and cared so deeply for all of those around her. And from a few members of Oni's small group from Elmwood Church, they met for years. This is from Mary Unra and uh, Kathy Plett. We were always amazed by the number of years that Oni would host our small group at her place. Time and again we would ask if we could bring something, but no. Oni insisted that this was something she wanted to do for the group. She was a gracious hostess, offering delicious meals. Who can forget her cream puff dessert with raspberries? Following a year away pursuing additional childcare studies in BC, Leona returned to Winnipeg, rejoining our small group. She often mentioned how she valued these small group meetings, sharing both her joys and her concerns. And Carl and Arlene Weeb, they uh, sent this little note. Arlene and I remember Leona as a quieter member of the group, who when she did speak, expressed a deep love and concern for her family and her daycare responsibilities. Leona's dedication and compassion for her kids, co-workers, and her family were the focus of her prayer requests. She looked forward with great anticipation to her vacation time with the family each year in British Columbia. When her niece was selling cookbooks for a fundraiser, Leona generously gifted each of us with a book. Whenever Arlene uses a recipe from another website called Mennonite Girls Can Cook, she is reminded of Oni. And yes, Oni was a great cook. And from Jack and Maria Funk, Oni came to our small group with an open heart, committed to care for us and to allow us to care for her. She was a good listener, quick to laugh and a good storyteller. Her family was always close to her heart, and we were privileged to join her in prayer for them. Leona was compassionate and kind. When Jack and I lost a close family member, Oni gave a gift card to a local greenhouse with instructions to plant something that would come back every year to remind us of our loved one. The peonies are currently in full and glorious bloom reminding us of our sister, and now of Oni, whose thoughtfulness made that memory possible. I just noticed there's beautiful pink peonies right here behind me. With Leona, you always knew what to expect. She was consistent, genuine in her affections and kindness. She was steadfast in her faith and in prayer through every trial that came her way. Oni will be dearly missed. And finally, from Jim and Karen Warner. During my first year at MBBC, or Concord College as it came to be known, I was chatting one day with a fellow who lived across the hall from me. In the course of conversation, it came up that my birthday was in a few days' time. He asked what I was doing for it, as in, what sort of special thing was happening on the night? I said, probably nothing. Maybe I'd eat a can of beans, something like that. <laughs> He's a good fisherman, this guy, good fisherman. <laughs> well, the chap said, we're having a thing at my sister's house. You should come. Here's the address. So when the day came, I thought, well, I might as well go. I arrived at Dunrobin Avenue 
to find a whole bunch of people in the house. As PDQ Bach played on the stereo, George was running around with a huge rack of ribs while giving me a running introduction to everyone there. One of those people was his sister Leona, whose house it was, and who was bustling about in the kitchen. The food was incredible. The meal ended with dessert, one that Oni, Oni had made called Dirt. The concoction with whipped cream and Oreo cookie crumbs and chocolate. The icing on the top read, Happy birthday, Jim! I then realized, at that very moment, George and Leona had cooked up an entire meal and party for me. Someone George barely knew, and someone who Leona didn't know at all. She was so gracious and so kind to this stranger. Qualities that have remained consistent throughout the many years I have known Oni. When I got to Winnipeg, I had the privilege of getting to know Oni's next door neighbor, uh, the family, Nancy and Evan and their sweet daughter, Talia. They were so kind, thoughtful and helpful to both George and I, and I knew at once what a treasure this family was to my sister. They helped Oni with anything and everything, including Oni's, watering Oni's flowers while she was in BC, and they're doing it right now and uh, they have just been a tremendous help. Thank you for the love and care you showed to Oni. Talia, you have a special place in Oni's heart. She talked about you many times and how beautiful you are inside and out. Thank you, Talia, for making a difference in Oni's life. I'm going to read the tribute from Evan and Nancy and Talia that they wrote for this time. Not only did we share a fence with Oni for the past seven years, but that fence quickly became a meeting place where we would share stories and laugh together. Before we even realized it, Oni had become a dear friend to all three of us and also a confidant for myself. Soon it wasn't just fence side conversations between friends, but side by side conversations as though we were family in the doorway front steps, back deck, around the fire pit, the location didn't matter. Talia would watch for Oni every day, and when she saw Oni coming down the back lane, regardless the weather, she would run outside to meet her at the fence for a little chat. We quickly discovered that Oni had a special place in her heart for children, and when Talia was talking, Oni was fully attentive always making sure Talia knew she was loved and important to her. Oni loved deeply and was, co was concerned that she would never be a burden to others. Her smile was beautiful, her laugh was, was rich, her faith was deep, and she was always so thankful. She held firmly to scripture and trusted God completely. For years she told me, whatever God had for her, that was the best. Oni left big impressions of God's love on everyone she knew, and she gave the best hugs. Certainly, Oni is missed beyond what we could express, and our meeting spot now feels strangely empty. I'm going to miss coordinating our flower colors for our gardens each spring and hours-long conversations, but mostly we will always cherish the memories and blessings of her friendship. We look forward to the day we, we will be reunited with Oni in the presence of Jesus when we will again see her beautiful smile and feel her warm hug. With love and hope, Nancy, Evan, and Talia. My earliest memories of Oni go back to the late 1970s and her time as team manager 
on the high school basketball teams my dad would coach at MEI. But as George already hinted at, I had the opportunity to get to know Oni when I moved to Winnipeg to attend Bible College. Oni in Lord's Place became a second home for me. A sanctuary away from dorm life and the food, but the close feeling of being with family. We ate, played, and laughed together. Oni became part of my neighborhood. Oni's neighborhood or circles of relationships included high school and college friends, fellow worshipers at Elmwood Church, the children, staff, board members of Carolot Daycare, the families around her home on Dunrobin, and her dearly loved family in BC. You are all Oni's neighborhood. You knew and loved Oni, and Oni loved and cared for us. But the source and example of this love that Oni shared with us did not come from just being a good person or performing a list of good deeds or adhering to a long list of rules. If you loved Oni, it was because she loved Jesus. Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, and his reply was quite simple. He repeated the Old Testament commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. But then he added, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible gives us a picture of what this love looks like. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. In the life of Jesus, we see this love demonstrated, and for those of us who follow him, we are commanded to reflect the love of Jesus to the world around us. Working at Carolot Daycare gave Oni plenty of opportunity to practice and demonstrate patience runny noses and temper tantrums, playing fairly and unfairly in the playground, the constant on and off of winter clothing, and last minute staff absences would have tested the patience of most of us beyond capacity. Reading through and hearing some of the tributes to Oni of former students, families, and co-workers, Oni's patient and kind nature is so evident. If you loved Oni, it was because she loved Jesus. Carolot was Oni's mission field. For 35 years, she demonstrated compassion and kindness to the young children in her care. Her selfless giving to others was, was demonstrated not only in the constant preparing of lessons and activity centers, but also in the meals and baking for special events she would often prepare on her own time. Living close by her work allowed Oni to respond to off-hour security alarms, to fill in last minute on her day off for staff who had to call in sick, or to decorate for special events and make the center a special place for the children and their families. Her kindness was demonstrated through these countless acts of service and hospitality. If you loved Oni, it was because she loved Jesus. Oni's friends and neighbors in Dunrobin also experienced this love. The countless meals prepared, gifts of baking, and homemade crafts for special events or 
just because. Oni's home and her heart were always open to us. It was not hard to talk with her for hours and to feel better afterwards. Even when discouraged herself, she would encourage those around her. Oni honored those around us by always putting their needs before her own. If you loved Oni, it was because she loved Jesus. In her home, Oni proudly displayed pictures of her family and shared many memories, including cherished times at Gabriola, celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and other special events. Not being able to t attend her dad's funeral in person was hard for Oni. But even in that, she did not keep any record of wrongs, but rather the perspective of caring for her family all the way from Winnipeg. If you loved Oni, it was because she loved Jesus. Oni's kindness and gentleness, her patience and the humble service of others reflected the love of Jesus for her. And it's this love that Oni showed to each of us is how we will remember her. If we loved Oni, it was because she loved Jesus. Oni's sister Ruth told us that Isaiah 41 verse 10 was one of Oni's favorite Bible verses. It goes like this. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Ruth said Oni would focus on one word at a time of this verse during difficult seasons. And most certainly, the last while has been difficult for us all through the pandemic. We knew that throughout the past two years, Oni's biggest concern was to keep the children at the daycare as safe as possible. She did not want to be the one responsible for bringing COVID into the daycare center. And as a result, she kept her contact with friends and her community outside of the daycare to a minimum. This was just another way for Oni to demonstrate her love for Jesus. And because she loved Jesus, she was at peace. James and I had the privilege um, of saying our goodbyes to Oni at the hospital a few days before she passed away. And actually what I said to her was, this isn't goodbye, this is just see you later. She was very much at peace. That was very evident. And during that time, I played a song by Josh Baldwin called Peace. I'd like to read to you a couple of verses from that song if I can get through it. <laughs> uh, there's freedom laying all my worries at your feet again. Even in my struggle, I'm surrendering. Your peace won't let me go. When my strength is nearly gone, when my wells have all run dry, it's your kindness that will lead me to your arms, where I find grace that you supply. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Surely all that you promised is so much more than I can see. And I will rest in the assurance that I have all I need here in the Father's peace. And the chorus goes like this. And when I breathe in, I don't understand, but I can feel it every waking moment in your presence, this peace won't let me go. If you loved Oni, it was because she loved Jesus. And because she loved Jesus, she had peace. We will stand up straight We 
an eagle, he will rise. On the wings of an eagle, he will rise. On the wings of an eagle, he will rise. For our hope is found in the power of God. On the wings of an eagle, we will rise. On the wings of an eagle, we will pray. Our Heavenly Father, we commit to you today our friend Oni. We thank you for gifting us with the time we were able to know her here on earth. And our hearts are sad today. But they are also full of hope. Because we know Oni has new wings. And she is in your presence. And for that, we are happy and joyful. We ask for your continued care and compassion as our hearts continue to be empty in the coming days and weeks and months. May you fill us with grace and of good memories of our time with Oni. We thank you for the blessing that she's been to each one of us. And we look forward to seeing her again someday. Thank you for this beautiful day that we could gather together and for joining us here today. We pray all of this in your precious and holy name. Amen. The family would like to invite you to a come and go lunch at Clearbrook MB Church starting at 12 o'clock until 2 o'clock. If you're over 50, you probably know where that is. If you're under 50, use Google. <laughs> There will be no formal program, so please come and go. Anyone in the Abbotsford area on the live stream, you're welcome to come as well. That concludes the service for today. Thank you for coming, and God bless.